Hi, everybody. Hi. Good to see you all. Welcome to Tuesday night releasing into presence class with a bit of a new format. It's nice to see everybody. I'm Chandra Easton. Um, I have had some health challenges, so I'm teaching from home. This will be the, la the last class before I do a summer hiatus. I will return on August 13th. For some reason, I have a bindu with me tonight. <laughs> wow. It must be the angle of the sun coming in. It's the orb of light. I wanted to come to class too. So I see you there in class and I see you there in Zoom. And it's nice to be here with you all. Um, let's begin. Uh, Hannah, do you have any announcements before we do our Narayani prayer? Yeah, me neither. And how is the sound? Um, sound is good. It still has a little echo, but I think it's fine. Um, no announcements here. You can announce the okay. um, tense class if you'd yeah. like. Yeah. All righty. Okay. So the next two classes will be taught by an old Dharma sister of mine named Gina McCarthy. She will do uh, her thing, which is uh, continuing with the meditation guidance, uh, similar to what I do on Tuesday nights, releasing into presence, mindfulness, uh, Buddhist-based meditation within the Tibetan stream. Uh, but then she also, as a, as a kind of birth spirituality educator and um, spiritual guide, it brings in work around the mother wound and how to heal our own, perhaps our own birth trauma, uh, or perhaps if we gave birth, perhaps aspects of that. Um, you might not think that's for you, but when I've heard her talks, I think, of course, you know, we all have certain aspects of that that we can feel into or heal. And even if it's more of a collective uh, reckoning and recognitioning, you could say recog, re, uh, you know, kind of conditioning of how we um, think of birthing and uh, life and how we come into this world and who we are. So that is Gina's domain, and she will speak much more eloquently than I in the next two classes. And then after that, we will have a wonderful guest teacher who is one of the OGs in Tibetan Buddhism, an early teacher, translator in Tibetan Buddhist practice. His name is Ken McLeod. He is a wonderful teacher who is a very important teacher for our beloved Michael Taft. So Michael Taft invited him to teach, and the Tuesdays worked for him. He will offer a six-week series on the Diamond Sutra called something like the Practitioner's exploration or guide to the Diamond Sutra, one of the most important Buddhist texts, sutras, uh, within the Mahayana or the Great Vehicle Tradition. And that will go from July 2nd to August 8, uh, 6th, right? <laughs> yeah. July 2nd to August 6th. And then I will return the following week on August 13th. And we'll pick up where we left off with the Lojong slogans, mind training slogans that we've been moving through. Okay. All right. So let's take a moment to drop in and arouse our motivation. We'll chant the Narayani prayer as our invocation to open the space. And then we'll meditate. Tonight we'll meditate for about 20 minutes. And then I'll give a Dharma talk and then we'll meditate again and we'll chant. Tonight's theme will very much be around uh, one mantra in particular, the six syllable mantra, Om Mani Padme Hong. So I'll teach a bit more on that and we'll, we'll close the class with a deeper experiential practice of that mantra. Okay, but first we'll begin with a grounding meditation after our Narayani prayer. We always begin by arousing our motivation for our practice, what brings us into these hallways of the heart, practice. 
taking refuge in these ancient teachings of introspection, of mindfulness, of quietude, the wisdom of turning inward to find a deeper sense of contentment. But feel that turning inwards as a pivoting, taking refuge within the wisdom of your own being, knowing that even though you might not feel that, that there is wisdom there, the wisdom of your own body, the wisdom of your own intuition, the wisdom of your own true nature. It's in there. We find it through practice, meditation. When we do this for ourselves, but also for the whole world, this is not just for ourselves. Whether you know it or not, we're doing this for everyone. This is bodhicitta. It must be. It can only be that. All the hardship, the pain and suffering, the growth, the revelation, the striving to heal, to wake up. We do this for the world in some way. And we don't even really need to know how or what that means. This is bodhicitta, the spirit of awakening, the heart of awakening for the benefit of all beings everywhere. And we always situate ourselves on this land. Uh, I'm on Liz John Ohlone land. The Alembic folks are also on Liz John Ohlone land. Take a moment to honor the land that you're on wherever you are. Give thanks and gratitude. Give thanks and gratitude to your teachers, all the wisdom beings, the mentors and guides who have brought you to this moment. Give thanks and gratitude to your biological ancestors giving you life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we enter this doorway with humility and gratitude. And now, and now we sing to the goddess as Narayani. Narayani is a Hindu goddess, but she's very linked to Tara, the Buddhist goddess of compassion, that awakened love and wisdom within all of us. You have the handout. I also have, um, I'll chat this in, for those folks in the Zoom room. There's translation there. If you'd prefer to just read the translation and listen, you can do that too. Otherwise, feel free to sing with us. We'll do 11 repetitions together. If you wish, you can bring your hands together in prayer and devotion. Please do what feels good for you. This is a Sanskrit prayer. It may feel foreign, but there is believed to be blessings within this ancient language that was is believed to be given by the gods to humanity, not a man-made language. So please try it on even. Move your mouth. Give it a try if you like. It's from the Devi Mahatmya, the 12th chapter. Great text devoted to the great mother in her many forms. Sharanagata dinartha, repeat after me. Sharanagata dinartha, paritrana parayane, repeat. Paritrana parayane, sarvasyarti hare devi, sarvasyarti hare devi. Narayani namostute. 
Narayani Namostute. Now, eleven times together. Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute. Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Sharanagata Dinarta Paritrana Parayane Sarvasyarti Hare Devi Narayani Namostute Thank you. Now let's release the hands down to the thighs and find our way into meditation. That might just be a simple shift, or if you need to adjust, we'll sit for about 15 more minutes here. Make sure you're comfortable. If you choose, you can also meditate in the supine position like Shavasana. Make sure your head and your back and knees are supported in a way that's comfortable. And glide right in, drop more deeply with each out breath, releasing tension with each out breath. Just take a moment to feel the natural rise and fall of the breath before adjusting or fixing or trying to lengthen the breath. Just notice, is your breath shallow or deep, long or short? And just feel this quality of being, this simple, quality of simply being with the breath in the body in this moment right now. 
is not needing to fix or do or be anything except right here, right now. And then I'd like to guide you through a little tool, a little breathing exercise that can help us when just simply being is not so easy. It can help regulate the nervous system and calm the vagus nerve. It's called resonance breathing, like a gentle pranayama breathing exercise. So now we're shifting from a simple just being with the breath to actually working with the breath, yeah? So the first step is to simply notice that with your next in-breath, you feel the belly expanding forward like it's filling with breath. And then with the out-breath, feel the belly drawing back towards the belly as it empties. Again, just simply inhale, feel the belly expanding forward. And then exhale, feel it drawing back gently towards the spine. One more like this. Just inhale, softening the belly, it's filling and moving forward. Exhaling, feeling it gently releasing back towards the spine. Good. And then so now we're just going to do some counting. As you inhale, we're going to count to four. One, two, three, four, and then hold the breath in, one, two, and then exhale for six, one, two, three, four, five, six, gently inhale, one, two, three, four, holding in, one, Two, relax as you exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Continue like this. One, two, stay relaxed throughout the whole process of the breath. Three, four, and holding. Two, and then exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gently inhale, feel the belly filling. Three, four, holding in gently. One, two, exhale, release. One, two, three, four, five, Six, last time, inhale, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, release, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, good, now release the breath control and come back to this natural Rhythm of the breath, letting go and feel the after effect of the pranayama. Notice the difference. Just letting the breath be natural, natural rise and fall without control, without many effort. The eyes can be closed or gently open, gazing at a comfortable angle towards the floor. The jaw is relaxed. The facial muscles relaxed. Feel the muscles as if they're melting off the bones. The tip of the tongue is gently touching the upper palate, the root of the top front teeth. 
The chin is slightly drawn in towards the center of the throat, lengthening the back of the neck, making the shape like a shepherd's crook. This gently tugs at the base of the spine, lengthening the spine. Feel the spine upright, but supple, like a stack of golden coins, the vertebrae stacked one atop the other. The belly relaxed, the belt line soft. Notice if you're holding tension in the kidneys or the belly, soften the hips, the knees, the feet, the pelvic floor. And we're going to practice our familiar practice of Buddha's instructions on mindfulness of the breath. The first phrase is bringing us home to the body where we can internally recite this simple phrase like a mantra almost, attending to the whole body. I shall breathe in. Attending to the whole body, I shall breathe out. Attending to the whole body, I shall breathe in. Attending to the whole body, I shall breathe out. Good shorten it. Attending whole body, breathe in. Attending whole body, breathe out. Can you do this? Can you attend to the whole body from the crown to the soles of the feet? Marry your awareness to the whole body. For the next few minutes, release distraction and come back, attending whole body, breathe in, attending whole body, breathe out. Thus one trains. Find the beauty in the simplicity and the repetition. It's like a portal into bliss, into the infinite, wish-fulfilling gem of the nature of your own mind. But don't grasp. Simply attend to the whole body, breathe in. Attend to the whole body, breathe out. And can this attending be a gesture of love, 
of self-care, like turning the light of your awareness, like turning your palm towards yourself, holding yourself with care and love. You tend to your body. Learn to listen and be with yourself without getting lost in the storylines of this, that, and the other thing. Simply bringing attention, mindful awareness, a loving awareness, attending to the whole body, breathe in, attending to the whole body, breathe out, suffuse that with love as much as possible. Loving yourself and loving the world is not different. Can you feel that? Give yourself that love. The love that you give others so easily. Give that to yourself by attending with each breath to your body. And when we attend to the field of the body, we may feel pleasure, we may feel pain, yeah? And so the Dharma teaches us to feel all of that and notice the impermanence of these sensations rather than feeling them as solid things. And in that way, it can loosen the grip and the fear that we may have around especially the harder feelings, the pain. We may feel it vibrating or shifting. Maybe the breath travels into these feelings and softens or opens them into a new a new experience. And the Dharma also teaches us to develop a quality of equanimity. It's one of the four measurables. Love, compassion, equanimity, and then joy. The equanimity is to see all of this, of pleasure and pain, with a level-headed wisdom, maturity. Yeah, sometimes it's pleasant in this body, and sometimes it's painful in this body. And we all will experience these things. No one is immune. We all have our turn. So how do we meet that? Can we turn towards it with loving awareness? Even these parts of ourselves that we don't like. It's not so easy, and that's okay. That's okay. Can you turn towards that part of yourself with love? Attending to the whole body, breathe in. Attending to the whole body, breathe out.
And then as we come to a close with this first sit, let's choose one aspect of ourselves that we are rejecting or not liking right now. Maybe that's a feeling of pain we might have or an emotional struggle. What are you, what are you struggling with? What are you pushing away right now? When you're attending to the whole body, was there something that was like a, a knot or a, a stumbling block? And can you, with more kind of laser awareness now, focusing, turn towards that with as much loving awareness as you can muster as if you're turning towards a child? So helpful, such a helpful tool. This part of yourself, it's not all of you. This part of yourself, turn towards it as if you were turning towards an angry child or an unhappy child. Or and say, you're welcome here. I see you. Why don't you come home? Come home to me. You might even imagine that you're embracing, wrapping your arms around this part of yourself that you've been pushing away and welcome at home. Hug it, welcome it into your heart. And even if you want to do that with your real arms, you can do that. Just imagine. Imagine that this part of yourself dissolves into your heart, your heart chakra. And re reintegrates with you. You welcome it home. It's a part of you. And then breathe, breathe into it. This is a part of you, and this makes you stronger. This makes you more real, more authentic, more raw, more human, more empathic, more compassionate. How does that feel for you? Good. And let's slowly come back together now. You can open your eyes. Just feeling that integration, you know, we're always with that. You know, that phrase, attend to the whole body, breathe in, attend to the whole body, breathe out, opens up a whole plethora of opportunities, right? Seems so simple. Seems so simple. And yet, you know, it's, it's, you could spend a whole long retreat just doing that one, right? Yeah. I wish I could see people. I'm gonna. You guys are so tiny. <laughs> I can't see you. Okay, good. Well, you know, that I I keep coming back to that practice. It's the practice that's so foundational. I learned it first from my teacher, Alan Wallace. He taught it at all of his retreats. I I never tire of it. There's another phrase too that we do a lot, which is the next phrase, soothing the field of the body. I breathe in, soothing the field of the body. I breathe out. These are from the um, Satipatthana Sutta, the, the, the sutra on the mindfulness of the in and the out breath. Also in the Four Foundations of Mindfulness Sutra. It's these foundational mindfulness of the breathing techniques. 
So there are many different ways we can do it. And these are two classic ones. And personally, they work for me. I like the phrases. They're helpful for the a mind that likes to think. <laughs> I think a lot of us have those kinds of minds. Other techniques just focus on sensations, and that can be very good too, of course. Uh, whether it's focusing at sensations at the aperture of the nostrils or just above the lip or at the belly, like in Zen, or throughout the whole body. There's so many wonderful techniques. And these are just a couple of them that work for me. So I keep bringing them to the class. They work for many people. I hope they work for you. You know, when you find something good, take it all the way. It's not about dabbling and being a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? We want to dig one deep well. Deep, one deep well, that's where we find the water. So tonight, you know, I'm not going to be teaching you all for a while. And there's, mantra is one of the doorways into releasing into presence. This theme of my class is releasing into awareness, releasing into presence, a.k.a. rigpa, a.k.a. primordial awareness, Buddha nature, basic goodness, basic space, dharmakaya, absolute nature, <laughs> you name it, you know, go all the way if you can, right? <laughs> sky's the limit so releasing into presence we release in the dzogchen vein which is a great perfection that's the tradition that i'm from within tibetan buddhism it's called the great perfection why it's everything's perfect just as it is it's not like trying to be some perfect thing buddha like attain perfection it's about releasing into that which you already are which is complete and perfect just as you are right and so this it's a releasing it's not a construction and a making something new it's a releasing into something that you already are and one of the doorways right of the three doors of body speech and mind we usually do some physical yoga or movement warm-ups that's something we can do through with the body door then the the speech door we also work with breath, pranayama, but mantra is the speech door. The mind is the third door, and we work with meditation, Buddhist philosophy, dharma teachings, contemplations. So the body, speech, and mind are these classic three doors or three pathways or avenues into the room of rigpa. They all lead into the same room. <laughs> Three doors. Pick your door. <laughs> Pick your date. <laughs> so tonight we're going to focus on the second door, which is speech. And we're going to use man mantra. Um, we're going to do one of the most important mantras within Buddhism. Om Mani Padme Hong. Oh, money, put me home. Oh, money, put me home. When in doubt, just say, oh, money, put me home. <laughs> when your mind is dropping into negative thought, when you find yourself talking shit about somebody, <laughs> oh, money, put me home. <laughs> Replace the negative mental states with something positive. Oh, Mani Padme Hong is a very good option. There are others. You could make up something else if you wanted to. But Oh, Mani Padme Hong is very powerful. It has a lot of Shakti behind it. It uh, arose within the Mahayana era of Buddhism in a sutra called the Basket Weaving Sutra. It is a mantra to the great Buddha called Avalokiteshvara. I'm going to show you a picture because I'm on Zoom and I can share my screen. I took a picture of a little tanka that I have at home. It's one of my favorite of Avalokiteshvara. Can you see? Is it a good image for the folks in the class too, Hannah? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So this is the Buddha of compassion, Avalokiteshvara. He has 
four arms. Very special. Uh, and he is white in color, peaceful in disposition, in the full lotus posture. He's holding a jewel, the I believe the Buddha, like the wish-fulfilling gem in his heart, if I'm not mistaken, at his in his two central hands. His uh, right hand is holding a mala, which I've taught about. And the, his left hand is holding the utpala, the flower, the lotus flower. Look how handsome he is. Isn't he hot? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you guys laugh. Do you have one? I see, Shannon, you have Avalokiteshvara. So he's, he's a really powerful deity. Story goes, he was a... a, a a human who became a bodhisattva. He had kind of worked through these various levels of, of realization, became a 10th level bodhisattva, and then moved beyond that and became a Buddha. And to this day is abiding within the Buddha field of Dewachen, which is the Sukhavati in Sanskrit, meaning the blissful realm. Basically, he is embodied love and compassion in a in the most essence we can understand that this iconography is just one way to creatively express appreciation express visionary experiences of embodied love and compassion and the mantra to him is Om Mani Padme Hum. I'll show you the Tibetan. The calligraphy is so pretty. Do you see that? So this first squiggle is of common um, calligraphy mark that marks the beginning of a of a text or a sacred mantra, and then this line also. It's like a striking point that marks the beginning of something. And then this is, the first syllable is om, like the sacred sound in Sanskrit as well. This is the Tibetan script om. This is the syllable ah here down below. And this thing that looks like a, like a seagull, <laughs> a bird, is the o vowel sound. And then the circle or the bindu on top makes it a mm. So this whole unit here is OM. The next syllable is MA, MA, and then NI. This is the NA sound, and then this is the E vowel syllable above it. And then this is PA, and then this is the whole compound word here. So it's PA. And then over here is the, so pud, and then below is ma. You see, it's the same as the second syllable over there. So pud ma, but then you have this on top, which is the vowel of a. So it's pud me, and what that is is okay. Padma means lotus. You might know that, but pud me signifies. Um, uh, it's a it's a grammatical way of saying in the lotus, in the lotus. And then this last syllable is a very powerful seed syllable. Just like om is a seed syllable, a bija mantra, very powerful. Hung is this last one. Hung is a seed syllable. You have the ha sound here with the little small ah that makes it a longer vowel sound so that would be ha but then down below you have a oo vowel sound so that would be hu but then above you have this crescent moon and then the bindu it's another way of making the ng sound ng so hung it's kind of similar to the om but slightly different it's an ng sound so this whole unit is hung. So you have from the beginning, om, ma, ni, padme, hung. Now you can read Tibetan. Isn't that interesting? 
you've probably seen this before. Have you seen this before? I want to see head nodding and nod vigorously because I can barely see you. No, you have not. Do you think it's beautiful? This the script is gorgeous. You know, for me in my 20s, when I saw the script, it's what made me want to learn Tibetan. <laughs> um, it's one of the reasons. Of course, learning the Dharma was the main reason. But I want I, I was drawn to learning the script. Um, I can't write as beautifully as this calligrapher. That would take more practice, but I can write it now. Oh money pun me home. Oh money pun me home. So om is this sacred sound that means uh well is made up of three parts ah, u, and m. Classic teaching, both within the Hindu and the Buddhist traditions. A, U, M makes Aum. And that's how we should actually recite Aum, is Aum. Say with me. A, U, M, Aum. <laughs> yeah. And it signifies the body, speech, and mind being purified into awakened body, speech, and mind. Okay, the three doors I spoke of. A, U, M, signifying the body, speech, and mind. And then mani means jewel. Mani means jewel. What kind of jewel? Not just any jewel, but our Buddha nature, the wish-fulfilling jewel, the jewel within our heart, our, um, you know, in, in, in the subtle body, it said that our soul our consciousness uh, buddhists don't believe in souls by the way but you know our consciousness sits within the heart chakra and that is the seat of the soul so to speak and that's where our buddha nature the seed of awakening the spark of our awakened nature resides within all of us and that is the jewel the wish fulfilling jewel that gives forth the greatest gifts right which is liberation, awakening. And so mani is this jewel. And then padma is lotus. Padme is in the lotus. So what's in the lotus? The jewel. So in the heart of the lotus is often it said. So within the lotus is the jewel. What does that signify? Our Buddha nature is within the lotus, with the heart chakra, the lotus within our heart. Often the lotus is the symbol of the chakra. Okay, so the lotus is such an important sim symbol because it grows out of the muck, of the mud, and then it blooms into this untarnished, beautiful flower, right? So likewise, we, sentient beings, can grow out of the muck of samsara, of suffering, and we can bloom into Buddhas. We all have that within us. Yeah? And so, Omani Padme, and then Hung symbolizes awakened mind. It's the seed syllable for enlightened mind. And it's often a seed syllable found within the heart, too. So, Omani Padme Hung. This mantra is is said to, it's like always going it's an embodiment of compassion um there are, there are monks nuns buddhist practitioners around the world chanting this mantra all the time there are people who have committed to it to doing a hundred million mani they call this the mani mantra a hundred million before they die <laughs> This has a lot of power to it. So I want to chant it before our class is over. We go till eight tonight. It's a shorter class tonight. So let's chant together. We're going to do it with the melody, and then we're going to do it mantra japa. So you can do melodic chanting, and then you can also do what's called mantra japa, which is more monotone. So what we do is we start with some melody, and then we'll break into what's more like kind of like they call it the buzzing of the bees, where it's a bit more swift. And I'll give you a sample of that. Okay? And we'll do it together. But you'll be able to hear me, but you'll go at your own pace. And so when you guys in the room, you'll be like going at your own. It's kind of cacophonous, but it's kind of cool. 
you you can pretend you're in a Tibetan monastery and you're all going at your own pace. <laughs> I wish I could hear you. Okay, so listen and we can chant together. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme hong. Oh, mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme ho, 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 mani padme ho. Oh, 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 mani padme ho. As you're chanting now, imagine that rainbow light emanates from your heart and swirls out in all directions, spreading bodhicitta, compassion mm -hmm. to all beings, spreading, filling all of space, mm -hmm. blanketing the world, sending goodwill, loving kindness, whatever you can, well wishes to all beings in need. Oh, mani padme ho. 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 Oh mani bami ho 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 imagine and feel that you are an embodiment of avalokiteshvara's love and compassion oh mani bami ho 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 oh mani bami ho 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 oh mani bami ho mani bami ho mani bami ho mani bami ho mani bami Oh, mani bami, oh, mani bami, oh, mani bami. You say, chant like the buzzing of the bees. Chant just loud enough so that your collarbones can hear you. Oh, mani, but you can chant quietly too or silently if that feels better. Oh, mani, but don't be stiff. You can sway a little from side to side, forward and back. Let yourself feel this. Oh, mani bami, 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 oh, mani bami. Oh mani bami hong oh mani bami hong oh mani bami oh mani bami oh mani bami hong Oh mani bami hong oh mani bami 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 hong 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 Oh mani bami maybe you have memories maybe there's some old memories being born in you again seeds being watered this ancient mantra Oh mani bami hong, 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 oh mani bami hong. 
Just simply wish that all being be free of suffering, may all war stop, may all the suffering come to an end, all those causing harm to others stop, put down their arms, their weapons, may their ignorance dissolve, their selfishness, arrogance, self-centeredness, may all of that negativity fall away and may all beings realize their true nature, realize their own Buddha nature, their own goodness. Om mani padme hum 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 om mani padme
your body. Give us some love, actually. Let's touch our, our body. I'm here with you, breathing, attending to the whole body. I'm breathing in and out. I'm not abandoning you. I'm listening to you. And I'm here with you. And now let's close by just making a personal prayer, sharing this goodness, this, any positive energy or merit that we've cultivated as a community with our practice, feeling this spreading out for the benefit of all beings. This feeling of generosity, of offering it up, it becomes limitless when we give it away. Dedicating the merit, it's closing our practice. Thank you, everybody. Let's come back. So I hope that this mantra lives with you, you know, there's these summer months, these summer month or weeks while we're apart. It's such an important part of these teachings. You know, we go through these Mahayana teachings of the Lojong, the mind training every week here. And the Mani Mantra is, is, is an important part of Mahayana, of Tibetan Buddhism, of uh, teachings on compassion. It's really like the most important mantra next to the Tara Mantra. It's like they're, they're on equal footing. Om Tari Tu Tari Ture Svaha and Om Mani Padme Hum. They're like brother and sister. So you have the brother, Avalokiteshvara, and the sister, Tara. Om Tari Tu Tari Ture Svaha. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed and that you felt that mantra can be a place of refuge for you. Yeah, this, it's not, you don't just have breath awareness. It's a good tool too, but you can. You can do other things. You can do other things as concentration practices, as a way to transform adversity onto the path of awakening, right? Which is the theme of Lojong, of mind training, which we focus on in this class so often. For those of you who are new, you might not know that. So um, I hope uh, you have a good summer. And I look forward to seeing you in person. Uh, in in August and I encourage you please come continue to come keep your practice going continue to uh, come on Tuesday nights and I'm sure you'll have a have a wonderful time thank you everybody thank you Hannah be well hi Ariane nice to see you bye Denise bye everybody bye take care enjoy your tea and your snacks I hear you have some treats Enjoy each other's company there at the Alembic. <laughs> and everyone else, be well, everybody. Take care. I'll miss you. <laughs> oh, my heart is a little sad, but that's okay. We're all human. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too. Have a nice summer. Ciao, ciao. Oh, money, bud me home.